Another episode of AD Hoops, man. Let's get it cracking, man. As always, man, your host, James West. But I got a big co-host. You saw him last week with a bathrobe on this time. He's looking a little well-dressed, man. Hey, Tracy Ham, man, how's everything going on your side? Man, I'm good. James, thanks for having me. Hey, as always, welcome to Athletic Decline Sports, man. Hey, check this out, though, man. I had to put on some clothes this time because Tyler got on me, man. The boss man got on me. So when boss <laughs> man get on you, you got to make a change. You know what I'm saying? Hey, don't worry, right. man. I, I've had my shirt off a few times. I had to get that phone call too, man. I'm just trying to get the views up. They want to hey, see man. some. They want to see some hairy chest and tattoos. I mean, but they want to see that mind. dad bod. <laughs> hey, that's why I'm from the chest up, not from the belly up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, Tracy, as you said, man, follow Athletically Decline on all social media platforms, man. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. We've eclipsed, I think, Tracy, over 710 subscribers, man. Dude, we we're in December. We we're just eclipsed 500, and now we're at 710. Man, the end of the year, it might be over 1500, man. So, hey, everyone, jump on board. We got some good events coming up, man. We got NFL draft shows coming up, and of course, we got baseball shows coming up. But today, hey, man, back to basketball, man. You saw us last week talk a little bit about basketball. And Tracy, man, I'm going to start off with this, man. Last night, man, hey, the. 20 and 0 at home Boston Celtics man get beat by the Denver Nuggets 102 to 100 Tracy man as a team like the Celtics who've been every year building after building a roster left and right now with Jer Holiday and and Przingis you know you lose to the reigning champs which hey man it, it, it can be tough but at your home court man as an organization how do you feel the Celtics should move on after this? Should you feel like they should start making trades ASAP or just stay put? It was just a bad game because they only scored 100 points. Usually they drop about 120. So right. give me your thoughts on last night's game. Um, So obviously with teams like this, you got two of the top teams, right? You love matchups like this because it can give you a preview as to, you know, if we see them again later on down the line, in this case, it will have to be the finals, right? After um, you want to know where are potential matchups that you can exploit. Um, you want to know uh, what you want to start to try to see what what kind of game plan can we build. I don't mind a loss like this, you know, two point loss. May, maybe at home, yeah. Um, looking at the box scores, you know, what I'm saying you gave up thirty four and thirty five to Jamal Murray and your and you know the Joker. So Joker. those are some things going into the next matchup. All right, all right. Obviously we might want to scrap this game plan. Let's see if we can try something else to slow those two down. What I did like though is they limited production from the other players uh surrounding the bench production for uh the Nuggets was low, but by no means do you you give up you start trading and they have a the Celtics have a solid team. I talked to you last time. I was tooting their horn. I'm still um, a Celtics believer. Um, like I said, you get 20 plus from Derek, uh, Derek White. You get 20 plus from Porzingis, Tatum that game. Jalen Brown has a bad game with 13. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, Jalen Brown is not going to give you bad production. You know what I'm saying? So, no. it's just one of those things where it's like, hey, let's go watch the film. Let's see next matchup. Uh, all right, so this game plan didn't work. Let's tweak it a little bit. There's no need to panic. Yeah, the definitely no, no need to panic. <laughs> no need yeah. to, definitely no need to panic. Uh, no it was a great need. game, though. Uh, like I said, I like how they took everything. I think if you're going to beat the Nuggets, you have to take away the other production because players like Murray, players like the Joker, they're going to get theirs. You know what I'm saying? So how can we limit everybody else? And then it comes down to a one-possession game like that. I can live with that. Yeah, no, hey, you're totally right, man. Yeah, that game was definitely exciting. Uh, the last bit of it, I don't – Aaron Gordon, man, you need to make them damn free throws, man. God <laughs> dang. You just have like, – golly. I know ever since you got tore up by that dog, man, you've been, you've been, a, little, been a little shaky. Hey. <laughs> they put the dog on them, bro. They stick the dog on them, man. Dog on. Right, man? <laughs> no trespassing. Dog beware for a freaking – Beware. <laughs> <laughs> what's up tracy man we'll move on move on to other stuff that's going on in the nba hey man you're wearing your raptors gear man hey guess what man you traded pascal siakam away man to the indiana pacers tracy man give us those details obviously we already know siakam played with the pacers last night got his little one day in his uniform ruined by freaking jeremy grant and the portland trail Blazers. 118 115 last night but yeah. Man, tell us the trade details on how that's going to work out, not for the Pacers, but also for the Raptors in the future. 
Okay, so um, like you were saying, uh, Pascal Siakam, 21 points last night, ruined. Um, I know we talked about on the last on our last show together mm -hmm. uh, that you know, I thought he was going to get traded going forward. The movement is to build around Scotty Barnes uh, in this particular trade. They trade Siakam for Bruce Brown, Jordan Awara, three first-round picks, and Kira Lewis Jr., who comes over from the Pelicans. It was a three-team trade, essentially. They had to mm -hmm. break it up into two. Um, for the Raptors, you get cap relief. You weren't going to pay uh, Pascal the max. Um, and I'm going to tell you something. I'm a, I love, as a Raptors fan, I love the growth and story of Siakam, late first-round pick, G League champion, works mm -hmm. his way up to becoming uh, an NBA champion, and then a max player. Like, who would have predicted that? You know what I'm saying? Uh, at this particular time, you've seen what he is in the NBA. He's not going to become a player that can carry a team, essentially. No slight to him. He's just a better second option or third option on, on other teams. And that's what the Pacers were thinking about when they make this trade. You pair him with Halle Burton, who is ascending uh, in this in this league. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You pair him with, you know, you got outside shooting with Buddy Hill. You got Miles Turner. Siakam slides. He fits in very well with what they're doing in their roster. Um, I think they will be uh, a better team uh, in the playoffs. It will be a tough team, to a tough out, as we like to call it. Um, for the Raptors, you get Bruce Brown, who I, I don't want to jump ahead, but I think – uh, we might be talking a little bit trade rumors, but he might get or trade. Yeah, he he because he he'll be he'll have trade value for a, a playoff team as a as a veteran, as a mm -hmm. champion, um, and a wing defender, right? And someone who brings intangibles. Um, and then also for the Raptors, you thinking, hey, we got three first round picks out the deal, two and twenty four, one and twenty six, uh, a chance to get like I say, young talent. Uh, Jordan Award, you get a shooter. And Kira Lewis, I think this is a guard to take a look at who never really got his time um, in in New Orleans to, you know, get that opportunity. So um, for the Raptors, like I said, they are going to hover around playing spot. They may get it. They may not. But this is essentially we are building for the future. We mm -hmm. are building around Scotty Barnes. You know, you make the trade with New York. You get quickly. You get Barrett. Now you got two first round picks. Um, I, I think the future is bright, depending on if you draft well. Uh, there are some rumors that the draft class is a little weak, but there's always someone that can hoop, man. You yeah, gotta, there's always someone, definitely. And I mean, your your you know your GM, man, he is definitely building for the future, which it isn't wrong. I mean, look at, I mean, I'm not going to compare it to Sam Presti and the Thunder, where they got like 48 first round picks and they're doing well and all that. But I like the trade for the Pacers and Siakam just because obviously the Pacers they're going to score points. So right. with Siakam there being somewhat of a defensive help. Now, I will say this, quick question. You know, Bruce Brown, you win the title with the Nuggets. You're like, all right, I'm going to get a bag. And you got your bag with Pacers, yeah. and that only lasted 40 games. <laughs> For a guy like Bruce Brown, now, of course, the bag's the bag. Let's just. But do you think in the back of his mind he was probably thinking like, damn, I probably could have just re-signed with the Nuggets for the a little Nuggets. less. I could have maybe signed with the Lakers for a little less, and I know I would have stayed put. Now, of course, you mentioned I think he's getting traded. Trade trade deadline is coming around the corner. It is quick. We right. got – I think we got a month. Yeah, I think it's like one month till trade oh, deadline. Yep. Where where do you see Bruce Brown possibly landing? Um, So right now, I would say when you're talking Bruce Brown, you really got to talk uh, playoff teams, right? Oh, yeah. Um, I've seen some rumors about, you know, float. I mean, obviously I'm always seeing LA, right? For me, <laughs> no, no. LA I mean, wants everybody. <laughs> I want to address that rumor. Um, I just don't, Bruce Brown would be a solid addition, but I think right now LA needs a score when you're talking in the trade market. And I know, and I'm like, they need a third option outside of LeBron and AD. Mm. Um, and I know we'll get to the, uh, to the zone take Murray rumors probably in a little bit but yeah he's talking bruce brown it has to be playoff team um and it has to be somewhere like he i i don't really like him in the starting role i like him off the bench like he was um, in Denver. and you know it, if you want to be honest he's like a miami heat culture fit type guy for me like he's he's gonna do what it takes to win he's gonna do what you ask him to do i would have thought when you you know it's always it's always kind of like it's always weird right it's, it's a player 
decision when you're talking, do I take, do I get the bag? Not not knowing if it's going to come later. And you know what I'm saying? I know you've seen Dennis Schroeder when he, you know what I'm saying? He, yeah, he yeah, fumbled that bag. He fumbled it, right? So it's always, look, secure, the, secure your family position, man. But sometimes winning is more important than that bag to some players, right? It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's always crazy to see, you know what I'm saying, someone's upbringing or where they came from or what they have coming into the league. You know what I'm saying? It, it does that alter their decision making a little bit. But if we're talking Bruce Brown, you know, I love to see him somewhere. I like East Coast, uh, Miami. I like, I like, I like uh, Philly. I think Philly would be a nice little, little option for him. Um, but but to be honest, I, I'll throw out one more team, Dallas. I like to see him in oh, Dallas because yeah, they Dallas. need a wing defender. Mm-hmm. I feel like when you're talking guys like like Bruce Brown, they can fit anywhere. Because they, they bring intangibles to the table. They, they bring that. They're going to hustle. They're going to play defense. They're going to knock down the shots. They're going to play within the offense, play within themselves, and do what it takes to win. That's how I view Bruce Brown. You can see that. You can see that early when he played with the Nets. You know what I'm saying? Even though he wasn't getting <laughs> shots, he was doing the dirty work. And then you see his game. Like, oh, this dude can play. When he got on the Nuggets, he, oh, he can play. He can play. He, can yeah, play. he was reliable. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's not a bum. He can play. play. And that's crazy because he was undrafted, right? You know what I'm saying? That's why we talk with these scouts. They got to do their they do their work. You got to do their work. Everyone can hoop, right? But sometimes it's about team fit. You know what I'm saying? I, so it'd be interesting to see. But like I said, I'll get recap it. Miami, I like seeing in Miami. Philly, or um, goodness, what I just say? Had a brain lapse. Dallas. Dallas yeah. I like yeah, I like those three for Bruce Brown. Obviously, I don't want to jump to ahead i'll talk about some teams that may need to trade but let's keep going down that list like you mentioned Dejounte murray heart hawks guard you know he's <laughs> he said two game winners this week i guess his trade value is going up now hey, but close player baby obviously man uh the, of course like you said El, the lakers won everybody so you know bruce brown's on that list freaking Dejounte's on that list where do you see Dejounte murray because obviously you've seen the lakers trade for a point guard ish back in the day that was D'Angelo Russell. Everyone loved it. D loading, right? Ice in his veins, and then playoffs. Uh. <laughs> <It's just not. laughs> but where do you where do you see Murray, man, possibly landing in the next month? If honestly, the what I've been hearing or what I've been reading, uh, LA. I'm obviously I'm not Shams, but LA has been uh, uh, expressed a lot of interest in his services. To me, that's a quick. That's a, it's a that's a quick and easy for me because you, you're trading D'Angelo Russell for someone who is of the same height, same weight, just a different skill set. Um, like for me, Dejounte Murray, he's going to commit to the defense end, and that's something that D'Angelo yeah. Russell has proven that he's not. And I also feel like Murray is a more consistent scorer uh, than Russell. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's he's one of those guys we we talked about Pascal earlier in this in this segment, uh, mm-hmm. but. Uh, that second or third scoring option, I think he provides that. Um, he's not going to carry a team, you know what I'm saying? But he provides a solid, reliable. Um, and I, th- like I said, I, sometimes I even think like we talk in basketball IQ, he just makes higher basketball IQ plays than D'Angelo Russell does. I'm, to be honest, I'm not a fan of D'Angelo Russell. Um, I just think, just you know, some players just seem distracted or they don't seem. Oh, man. I know it's bad. On the outside looking in, obviously I'm not there, but don't look like their commitment level is the same as um and obviously he's got the goat right beside him. To, you know, yeah. Angelo Russell could be so much more more of an impact, right? Um and I and I listened to Gilbert Arena's podcast and he basically said like that, you know, people who have that that's what separates the great players in that tier one, tier two bucket, that dog mentality and mm-hmm. who's willing to commit to the game. You know what I'm yeah. Sometimes I question that. Sometimes with this, he seems distracted to me. Oh yeah, no. I mean, hey, I mean, of course, when you get paid millions and millions to do, basically, I like calling it a hobby or you know just a extracurricular activity. Man, sometimes they people. I, I always find it weird. People get their bag and they're like, they think in the back of their head, oh, I think I'm good enough. I don't need to do nothing else. I mean, hey, Tracy, a little backstory that happened to me, man, in high school. I was Uh-oh. averaging like. 20 a game my sophomore year and i was thinking i don't need the damn i don't need to damn do no off-season training man let me go check let me go chase these women boy i sat my bench junior and senior year <laughs> i wasn't that good i wasn't that good no more so hey man that definitely hey, that's happened. probably when you had hair too 
Hey, I was rocking the bird, man. Chris Anderson mohawk, man. Oh, too. No, man. Hey, designs on the side. Oh, man. I was, <laughs> I was, man. Hey, I was a force to be reckoned with. But keep going on, man. Hey, now some three. I'm going to go three more players that I okay. feel like could be on the trading block. Talk to and me. obviously, these guys are off the, off like, their role is to score points, you know. Jordan Clarkson, Utah, you know. I've everyone loves Malcolm Brogdon, you know, being that defender and shooter type with the Pacers and then with Boston. And then of course Jeremy Grant from also in Portland as well. I mean, those are my three guys that I'm looking at to get possibly moved this year. Obviously, the Jazz, they got, you know, of course, they got like 14 first round picks when they traded away, you know, Spider and freaking Gobert. But I mean I see I see Utah easily getting getting some more value for someone like Jordan Clarkson who journeyman's always done really good scoring the ball of course similar to what J.R. Smith used to do but obviously his time with LeBron did not go as planned as I liked you know it seems like it always happens man the lights get way too bright when you play with LeBron so those three out of those three players man who do you see getting shipped and moved around so Jeremy Grant, we just talked about players getting the bag. That's why Jeremy Grant is in Portland right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if they'll move. I don't know if they'll move him, mm-hmm. but I would love to see him in Dallas. Because you, if you, if you're thinking about, like we said, I think we said this on one of the, uh, one of our previous segments was uh, one of our previous episodes was that Dallas was lacking a wing defender, mm-hmm. and he's an easy slot in three and D player, and it gives them some wing toughness which i feel like they lack you know it's one thing to have six four six five on the wing versus six seven six eight who down who you can slide to that stretch four position when you play small ball Mm -hmm. um that's something i think that um i think dallas should look real hard dallas was also looking at pascal just didn't give up the right trade back you know just didn't give up the right Mm -hmm. trade package right got outbid it is what i heard so um, Jeremy Grant, if he is available, I think Dallas should approach um, Portland on that if they haven't already. Um, when you're talking Jordan Clarkson, instant offense, instant offense. Um, for him, I'm thinking somewhere like I know I just threw out the Heat, but like the Heat or the Knicks, and I say the Knicks because um, I read somewhere that Quentin Grimes wasn't really happy with his role as the shooter, that young shooter that comes off the bench. Um, yeah, wasn't happy with his age Coog. yeah, so if he's beefing with the coach and how he's being handled, hey, let's get some more offense coming off that bench. You know what I'm saying? Someone who is a, a known scorer, not that Quentin Grimes isn't a great player or won't be a great player, correct? But Jordan offense, give, Jordan Clarkson gives you a another ball handler, and like I said, just instant offense, right? Because right now, Jalen Brunson is, is shouldering the offensive load for them, but why not be able to, to replace? Um, you know, substitute instant offense for some more instant offense going forward. Because you know Tim those teams are going to play defense. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then they play tough. They play tough. So let's get some scoring to add with that toughness. And then I said the Heat because I feel like the Heat need another score. Like, Thank it's you. just Jimmy, <laughs> Bam, but they need a uh, they need a score from the point guard position. Um, and I just, yeah, I really feel like they could, they, that, that would have some value that would, that would hold some weight. So yeah, that that's 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 my take. I think those two. Yeah, my I, yeah. Some some of these teams, yeah, some of these teams are definitely going to be buyers, and definitely some teams are going to be sellers. Of course, I think the Chicago Bulls are definitely going to be a seller. I just don't know if they're going to get the value they will for DeRozan or Levine. But yeah, a team that. a team that's been um, talking as of late is the 76ers. Now, of course, they're top. I think they're the third seed in the East right now. Maxi's been balling, and B's been balling. Of course, Shaq has been on the record saying if Tobias Harris is the guy to make sure they can get over that hump. It's been a while since I've seen Tobias ball out, but do you, where, where do you see, where do you see the 76ers possibly maybe going um, in the direction of maybe trying to get someone? I know you mentioned um, someone like Bruce Brown, which is a definitely a good addition, but obviously, you know, when you're looking at the 76ers, um, you got, you got, you got Boston and you got freaking, Milwaukee ahead of you, and of course you just got you know, and of course somehow even though the Heat may be the seventh seed, they still find a way to beat every team in the playoffs. Right, so right. if you're the 76ers, where 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 are you looking at, basically? Um, so with me and my thoughts on 76ers is obviously 
Um, Joel and B just showed us so much of uh, a low. For, I mean, honestly, Jordan Clarkson might could even slide in there too. Uh, you know, because yeah. right now I'm just just looking at you know saying MB obviously the office is centered around him. Um, Tyrese Maxey, who is is ascended, could be a candidate for most improved player in my opinion. Like, oh, he, he should ascended. win that by a mile. Um, and then you have Tobias. I'll be honest with you, I've never been a Tobias believer. Um, I just, but how many players can score like him? You know what I'm saying? At six, and play, at that side, and play like, defense, like yeah. and play defense. Great addition, picking up Kelly Oubre this this summer. Yeah. Um, Melton has the Anthony Melton's uh, had an increase in minutes. He's a double digit score for them. Um, I just feel like, like I said Bruce Brown would have slotted in him or I mean, they, like I said, Clarkson would fit in too because he needs someone. We need scoring. Once who's going to shoulder that load? Now those should be Tobias Harris minutes, but Tobias only average. I mean, I say only, but he averages for him to be on third score. He averages seventeen. I mean, nowadays everyone's averaging twenty plus, <laughs> and we can't get set. I mean, you know what I'm saying? We're getting seventeen out of you, so that means he's having some games over twenty. And he's having some games well under At ten. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like, so that's that's my question: is where is my scoring coming from? Or are we just doing a two a two player system where Embiid you get yours, then Tyrese you get yours, and we bring y'all together, and then y'all just carry y'all gotta carry us. You know what I'm saying? But I I just feel like they they could also use another score in my opinion mm-hmm. that will make them a little bit more dangerous. Yeah, I no, because because you you've seen what's going on right now. It's Embiid ball right now, oh, but yeah. it's always Embiid ball, and it never gets them anywhere. Yeah. It never gets them anywhere because you gotta have uh, hey, it, it might it hey it might have would have got them somewhere if it wasn't for the boop 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 boop. <laughs> but no, you're it's totally not, right. On, I man. mean, I mean, the 76ers they had their shot another time when they played the Hawks. You you remember what happened? They <laughs> they should have hey. won it. Hey, yeah. And I but, know. Like, yeah, I was saying, I know that. I, I, Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, I was gonna say I know a little bit of that is uh from Ben Simmons' time, but still to this day, like you said, when it's in B's ball, it hadn't gone him anywhere so far. So, right. Um, and it's crazy because you know he right now he's an MVP candidate. I played Joker last week, um, uh, in a primetime matchup. I can't. I just don't know if he'll even win MVP because we don't know if he'll last the minimum amount of games required. You know what I'm saying? Like they right. run, and Nick Nurse has been known to run players in the dirt. That's what he does. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's his door deal. He ran our Toronto Raptor players in the dirt. You know what I'm saying? So, and then by the time we get to the you know the playoffs, he's I feel like he's gassed. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. why not bring in another score to come ease some of that? We could save him for when it really counts. Yeah, definitely, because there's going to be times where he's going to be in foul trouble, and then it's like, who, where are you getting your scoring from? And like you mentioned, that's where Tobias should step up, but maybe not Tobias. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll get a uh, get Jordan Clarkson on there. So, hey man, before we wrap up a little bit of the show, man, we're going to go through some quick takes. Hey man, Miami's been been a little popular lately in the quick takes, man. Hey, number one, hey D Wade's going to get a statue revealed, man, and then number two. Hey man, Udonis, Udonis Haslam, man, the Raptors up in the ra- yo. Can you imagine being getting your number up there in the Raptors? And you probably, I, I had, I don't I haven't looked at the stats. You're gonna have to maybe look it up for. I'm pretty sure his career average is probably less than 2.5 points a game. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm gonna tell you something, man. I don't know what's more impressive, that or the fact that he hadn't choked someone out this season. You know what I'm saying? As the player coach, I bro, I don't know what else. You know what else is more impressive is how long he's gotten checks from Pat Riley in Miami. <laughs> I just, my man, look, like, I wonder if him and Pat share a bank account at this point, bro. Like, I'm not gonna lie. The one moment, if there's any moment I remember from Udonis Haslam's career, and it was when he had the cornrows. And the oh yeah, man, yeah. I remember. I I, I, won't, I don't know if it was the 06 year when they won the title or 07, but he he shot a little mid range shot. He thought he got fouled. And man, he threw the referee at the freaking ref. Man, I was like, <laughs> but so Tracy, man. Hey, so how how do you feel, man? D Way getting a statue outside of their arena, and then you know, Udonis, like man, been, being the I, ultimate team player, basically, you could say. Yeah, I feel like, well, with Udonis, look, man, we joke around, but 
you there are certain people that bring value to organizations, right? It's certain mm-hmm. players. I just think about my own experience as a hooper. Like, um, there are certain people that you just need, like Dray, like Draymond. He just get like they just they they bring intangibles, right? And sometimes you know from the outside we don't see it, but you know some stats don't capture everything. You know, there's a field, oh, yeah. there's momentum, there's you know what I'm saying people that work hard and can inspire other people. Obviously, they feel that way about Udonis, and that's why you know what I'm saying he's been he's been around for so long, and that's Definitely. a testament to his character. You know what I'm saying? Like you need oh, yeah. people like that around your organization, around your team, because if we've seen it with the Heat. There is a way they have a process. They have a way of doing things, and they stick to that process. Hell and that's yeah. how you build consistency and discipline. You know, and that's that's why they're in the finals every, all the time with the least talented team. Yeah. Because, you know, I can trust that no matter who it is, that person going to be in that spot when they're supposed to be there. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. you know, I can trust that this person's going to play the right way. I can trust that my teammates going to have my back. And that means more than a, than a lot. But, you know, we're in the era of basketball where we're transitioning away from that. It's me, 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 me. How many oh, yeah. can I get? You know what I'm saying? It's t- kind of taken away from the team element. But kudos to, to Udonis. With D-Wade, look, man, D-Wade went on a run that was – I mean, it was just a crazy run. And he's a very – he's a crazy, talented player. He deserves to get his statue. You know what I'm saying? I just wonder if they're going to paint the fingernails on that statue. <laughs> oh, man, dude. He showed up with them paint. Hey, man, now that's a, contra- a controversial topic. I mean, shoot. I mean, the other day, a hey, former Cowboys Bills receiver Cole Beasley say, nah, man, these, these new dudes, man. And now he's, now he's underwater because, of course, hey, you – just Lord be it, man. You can't have a different opinion, I guess, than the yeah, I, I guess the vibe. You're not gonna get me fired, James. I ain't saying nothing else. You get me fired. As long as I, hey, tr- trust me. Hey, all I'm saying is I ain't painting these fingernails. Uh, that, hey, never mind. I ain't gonna say it either. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, look, yeah you are, cause you got a daughter. Y'all gonna be painting them together. No, man. <laughs> hey, no, nah, man. You you ain't gonna see me paint my nails. You ain't gonna see me wear no dress. I'll drink some tea at the tea party, baby. Would you pick me up? All right, man. <laughs> yeah, hey, I'll bet you bottom. But <laughs> moving on, hey, All Star Game is in Indiana, so of course, hey, Indiana throws out a full court link basketball goal in their airport. Now, of course, I've seen a lot of memes that were like, "I can't wait to tear my ACL on on my flight delay. I can't wait to miss my flight with my family because I'm trying to get a dub for them." But I watched a video the other day. So the goals and all that's out there, but the rims are covered. Like they got the plastic on top of them. So no one can actually hoop out there. And I was like, damn, that's sad. Hey, you know somebody going to try it, bro. Oh, yeah. Well, hey. I, hey. I watched the videos. Yeah, they got the they got it boarded up. But I, I, the funniest one I saw was I can't wait for TSA to arrest me because I say open shooter, open shooter <laughs> in the corner. Like, well, what the dogs will be on you, man. Dogs will be on you. Hey, last thing talking about All Star Game. This is 2024, but 2026 Clippers are are going to host the All Star Game at their new Intuit Dome. Now, of course, it's not yet finished, but I've seen a ton of videos. I don't know what your views are about it. I've heard Steve uh, Ballmer. I can't even say his name. Ballmer freaking say that he's going to give discounts for Clipper fans if they stand up and cheer, and I'm like. Oh, I, this project must be a pain in the ass if all these things are coming out. Like, I get trying to motivate people, but still, that is right. LA, one of the most expensive places to live in, and it's going to be expensive to go to a Clippers game now. So, Tracy, man, your thoughts, man, on the Intuit Dome in LA and the Clippers hosting in 2026? I'm, I'm gonna tell you, man. I think Steve um, Bomber had this all in mind when he went out to purchase. Right. This, oh, yeah. this this didn't just, you know what I'm saying? It didn't just pop up this year. I think he's had a vision. And that's you see the money moves he's making. I'm gonna, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna take ownership and I'm gonna lock up and keep my stars on the Clippers. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna make blockbuster moves to bring in these high profile athletes. To is he's he's about establishing a brand right now. Oh, you yeah. know what I'm saying? That's why, you know what I'm saying? I think they're gonna end up locking up PG uh thirteen. For some more, I think he, I think an extension is so. coming his way. They're not gonna let him go because right now, Clippers brand is at an all time high right now. It is, and you know what? The way they've been hooping, they might be a sleeper finals pick. So they just are think about sleeper. that. Think yeah. about the momentum that builds, right? 
I lock up my two superstars pretty much until the end of their careers. You know what I'm saying? I host the All-Star game, and you might throw in a potential finals visit in there. My brand, he's just making money. He's making money moves right now. Yeah, I applaud him for it. I ain't got nothing. I ain't got nothing. And you know all those stars. You know, we're talking the All-Star break. Everybody want to be in L.A. Everybody want to be in L.A. Everybody want to be in L.A. Yeah, I don't know how I'm not a West Coast cat, but everybody want to be in LA. I'm so. not gonna lie, I I lived in Oakland for almost yeah two years. I love the West Coast time zone when it comes to watching sports, but other than that, oh, and the weather, yeah. the weather's I nice. But other than that, everything else is no, I cannot go back to the West Coast, man. You know, I gotta stay in the South, man. <laughs> but Tracy, man, hey, let's wrap it up, man. We got Sunday games. Hey, you got two that you particularly like. We're gonna start off with Miami. Versus Orlando, who you got? Um, I'm gonna go with the Heat, simply because I think they've been a, they've been a little bit. They got blown out by the Raptors, <laughs> and in that game they look like they were slump, they looked a little slump. But I look for them to, like I said, I look for them to be for them to you know bring back that physicality. I think I think they're gonna bully them young boys down in Orlando this in this game. Um, look for them to get back on track. It's about that time, right? You know, you you, you coast, you, you get a good little, you build build some wins up, you coast a little bit to the All Star break, and then after All Star break is when you start seeing that, oh, yeah. you start seeing the principles, you start setting your rotations, you start preparing for the playoffs. So, I think the Heat are gonna gonna, I think they're gonna start trying to track and get their shit right it the right way, and then get to playing their style of basketball close to the All Star break, come back afterwards, and really start. I'm you not going to lie, Tracy, man. I, hey, you said they got blown up by the Raptors the other day. They just got beat by the Trey Young-less freaking Hawks last night. Uh, I'm Give me Orlando. Give me freaking yeah, we'll Wagner. Orlando, okay. <laughs> give me Paulo Branchero. Give me freaking Markel Fultz in the squad. Yeah, give me Orlando. And I I just now got on board with the whole play the song and they the Orlando magic. The Orlando... Dude, you gotta watch it. It's a little weird, but I guess it's like a 35 year anniversary thing. And then uh last game, hey, Pascal Siakam, hey, Indiana Pacers versus Kevin Durant and the Suns. Now, th- this should be a ton of points, in my opinion. But Tracy, oh, man, yeah, who you got? You know, you know, Phoenix ain't really locking up like that. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, I'm gonna tell you what caught me on guard was Grayson Allen's come out game last week. I ain't expect that one. Um but I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Phoenix uh, simply because I'm gonna tell you I love the tra- like I, said, I love the Pascal Siakam trade for the Pacers. Yeah. Um, it, it might take a little time to get the pieces to gel correctly, but they have the right pieces, and I think once uh, once it starts to really, you can see the vision of where they're going. Um, I think that was an excellent trade, especially if they can lock him up with a contract extension. But in this particular game, I've got the Suns. Um, they've been playing. They've been playing some reasonably de- decent ball uh, this, this past week, yeah. I, I believe. Hey, any any anything's better than what the Lakers do? Freaking lose by like eighteen to a seven point underdog in the Brooklyn Nets freaking last night. That makes no sense. But all right, man. Yeah, I like it, man. Oh, hey, Miami and Phoenix, and I got Orlando in the over for the Indiana Phoenix game. Hey, man, Tracy, man, it is great talking ball with you, man. And I'm glad. Man, I don't know what it is. You look great, man. The, I don't know what it is with the lighting, man. The sun is making you look great. Your teeth are white, man. Everything's looking good. I mean, you're looking a little like you nah, work dude, out a bit. I'm going to have to make blush, bro. schedule. <laughs> <laughs> so, but as always, man, hey, this is Athletically Declined Sports, man. Keep following us for more AD Hoops episodes. Don't worry. There will be more episodes coming out. But tune in. February is coming around the corner. We will have – a watch party soon for the Super Bowl 58, as well as the NBA, dr- not NBA, the NFL draft show leading up to the draft, man. Mock drafts, position drafts. You're going to see Tracy, man, covering a position or two. We might you might have to find out. Like I said, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And as always, man, hoops, man. Hoops, there it is. I like Hold your form, James. Hold your form. Oh, yeah. There you go. I never hold it. Yeah. <laughs>